The SDLC analysis phase is the most critical phase determining the success of a project. This is because it lays the project's foundation. All the remaining phases rest upon the work produced in the analysis phase, namely the functional and system requirements, defining exactly what a project is going to implement. The analysis phase is used to dig deep into the system concept to completely understand the system proposed and determine what needs to be implemented to satisfy the concept. This is done by reviewing all the analysis and research from the startup phases to flush out the features and purpose of the system. Additionally, interviews are held with users and product management to produce use cases. Use cases document scenarios or sequence of events, capturing user input to the system, system behavior, and possible outputs. Use cases explore main user paths, error handling and recovery, and possible system issues. They capture how a system should interact with users to satisfy desired functionality, which helps to identify and clarify requirements. Use cases are an excellent way to uncover and document customer and team expectation, which may not be obvious. Once the system is understood, it can be broken down into smaller components and subsystems. This breakdown gives a high-level system architecture and aids in documenting the functions and operation of the final system. This work is done by the development team leaders, including the system engineers, architects, project manager, and small team leads. The development team gathers information from the product manager who relays input from the customers and stakeholders. Additional input must be gathered from company authorities in security, compliance, and IT operations to ensure all external requirements dealing with regulations, privacy, or company processes and standards are accommodated. The goal of the analysis phase is to identify the system's functional and system requirements and the high-level system architecture. These together describe in detail exactly what needs to be implemented in the final product to deliver the desired features and functions. The analysis phase produces a number of artifacts that guide the design phase. The most important artifact is the requirements document, which is often used as a contractual document of what the project will deliver. The requirements document holds functional and system requirements, which determine what needs to be implemented in the final product. Each requirement defines some aspect of the system's functions, behavior, performance, or interfaces. Requirements only state what the system must do. They never say how a feature will be implemented. And each requirement must be testable so that it can be verified during validation. A general requirement, like the system must be user-friendly, relays a desirable feature that cannot be quantitatively measured, so it is not testable and cannot be verified. Testability is important because the approved requirements document is contractual. It is common to trace each requirement through design to at least one test case to ensure all requirements are implemented and validated. Technical and business groups must work together to uncover the system requirements. Communication between departments is facilitated by graphs, pictures, and diagrams that help departments with different thought processes converge on a single perspective. Use cases show the interaction between system users and the functions the system must perform. Use cases enable teams to explore system behavior, fleshing out the boundaries of the system, the different perspectives of different user roles, and uncovering errors and the correct recovery behavior. Interviews with stakeholders and users uncover goals and expectations, which are critical to the success of the project. These interviews can be held one-on-one, -on -one, in focus groups, or by sitting with a user and observing how they currently do their work. The notes from these interviews are vital input to writing the requirements. A high-level conceptual model of the database is often constructed, showing entities and the relationships between them. 
These entity relationship diagrams help understand the data items that will be used and stored by the final system. The conceptual entity relationship model will be flushed out into a logical model, adding details like attributes, identifiers, and cardinalities, as everyone comes to agreement on the entities and their relationships. System architecture diagrams show the different physical computers and devices that will work together to create the software system, as well as the software's interaction with external systems and data stores. These diagrams, which were created during the planning phase, are used to understand how data flows through the system. The functions performed by each server or device is broken down into components and subsystems to create a rough high-level software architecture. As each requirement is discovered, it can be associated with one or more of these software components and subsystems to help categorize and organize the requirements. These categories often become the sections of the final requirements document.